Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Lyon, a consultant neonatologist from Edinburgh, Scotland and the United Kingdom. What I want to cover today is why I believe it's still vitally important that we consider carefully the temperature control of the preterm baby and also to look at how we can monitor and optimize the thermal environment of the immature newborn. The importance of keeping babies warm has been known for centuries. Serenus in the first century AD understood this and wrote about it in his writings on the care of the mother and the newborn. In late 19th century Paris, Tarnier and his student Boudin used incubators which they'd copied from incubators they'd seen in the Paris Zoo for incubating eggs. They showed that by keeping small babies warm, they could significantly increase survival of these children. Such was the success of Tarnier and Boudin's work that another of their students, Martin Cooney, seen here holding the world's smallest surviving baby at the time, would take the incubators and the babies around various exhibitions and fairs, and the public would pay money to come and see these wonders of modern science. It was in the 1950s and 60s that Bill Silverman and others carried out a number of careful randomized controlled trials which showed that by keeping babies warm, you could significantly improve survival. They showed that you could reduce the absolute rate of mortality in uh, these babies by 25% just by keeping them warm. Now, 25% is actually an enormous change. If you put it into perspective, the absolute uh, rate of mortality changed by about 4 to 5% following the introduction of surfactant. In their studies, there were a number of babies under 1,000 grams, and the, the effect that they saw was across all birth weight groups, although we would have to accept that probably a number of these babies were growth-restricted rather than significantly preterm. Obviously, the way that we care for the newborn baby has changed significantly since the 1950s, and the case mix of babies that we see is also entirely different. It's unlikely that we're going to see severe cold injury in babies born in modern facilities in the developed world. But there is evidence that even more minor degrees of cold stress can have adverse effects on the preterm baby. For example, we know that low temperature on admission to a neonatal unit is independently associated with increased risk of death. And there's also effects of cold stress on surfactant function and on growth of the baby. Babies nursed in unstable thermal environments have increased risk of apneic episodes, and previous work has also associated unstable environments with increased mortality. So I believe that there's a whole host of data that, despite the uncertainties about how to apply these data from the 1950s and 60s, there is actually enough evidence to make us assume that the regulation of the thermal environment to achieve thermoneutral conditions remains a major requirement for effective care of the very low birth weight infant. When you look at data from large databases like Vermont Oxford, you still see that actually more than 50% of preterm babies are cool on admission to the neonatal unit. And also, this recent report from the Neonatal Research Network, looking at babies under 1,500 grams, showed that only 10% of them had admission temperatures around about 37, and actually about 50% uh, were cold with temperatures under 36 degrees centigrade at the time of admission. This study also showed that admission temperature was inversely related to mortality and sepsis. There was a 28% increase in mortality for every one degree centigrade drop in temperature. Interestingly, they also showed that there was an association between uh, babies being cold at birth and a prolonged resuscitation. This was despite the fact that all these babies were under radiant heaters. So what seems to be happening is that the babies are losing heat faster than they can gain it from the radiant heaters. The reason the radiant heaters are struggling is that actually the major source of heat loss uh, following delivery is actually from evaporation. The babies are born wet, water evaporates off the skin very quickly and they lose a large amount of the heat of evaporation. And we found that if you put babies into plastic bags or cover them with a polyethylene occlusive dressing, then you can reduce evaporative losses and significantly increase the temperature on admission to the neonatal unit. Vora and others are at uh, this time carrying out a randomized controlled trial looking at the effects of polyethylene skin wrapping in babies under 28 weeks gestation. 
They've already shown that by wrapping the babies, you can significantly improve admission temperature. But this study is ongoing and looking at whether there's an outcome difference between the wrapped group and those receiving standard care without polyethylene skin wrapping. Once the baby's admitted to the neonatal unit, they're usually nursed in a warming device. This is a schematic of Tarnier's um, original incubator from the 19th century, where air was passed over hot water bottles. There's even a sponge to get a little bit of humidity, and later uh, thermometers were added. The design changed a little bit, but the functionality remained much the same, and this is an incubator from the sort of late 60s, early 70s. The modern neonatal unit is a completely different place to that of the 1950s, and babies are nursed in, in a variety of warming devices. Normally a preterm baby, uh, particularly a sick preterm baby, would tend to be nursed either in an incubator or under a radiant heater. The babies can be kept warm on heated gel mattresses, and we mustn't forget that the mother herself actually remains quite an efficient incubator even after the baby is born.